Okay. For those of you who are new here, again, my name's Ethan. Make sure you check my website, ethanren.com. From there, you can find links to all my various socials. We are currently live on YouTube and Twitch. Make sure to follow or subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date with all the latest information and be notified when, when I go live next. So you can be here, a part of this stream, asking questions, anything you might need. The next symbol we're going to be covering is VGK, Vanguard European ETF. We've covered a lot of ETFs here today, and you're starting to see a pattern, not just across one company, not just across one index, not just across one country, but all these major market indexes representative of assets from all over the world are representing that, you know, maybe, maybe it might be time to start buying some of these assets. And we're going to further explain that here today. So VGK, Vanguard European ETF. What are some of the things that are appealing about it? Well, our dividend yield for this specific index is 4.48%. That is massive. That's probably one of the biggest dividends we've covered here today, other than 3M's 5.5% de dividend off a singular company. But again, this is an index. The S&P offers maybe a 1.6% dividend, the 1.4, I think. And then the QQQ is probably around 0.6% dividend. Can't really beat that 4.48, again, index the u.s national average for dividends on a singular company it would be roughly that three percent and this is well above that well above that what else do we like about this company well as we've explained across all basically every other index we've covered today let's look at the rsi the rsi right here currently oversold towards the bottom end touching that 30 that 30 that 30 on the rsi is typically a bullish symbol. You want to be buying when things are oversold. You want to be buying low and selling high, riding that momentum up. When, ev when the headlines are scary, when everyone's worried, when that's typically when you want to be entering these positions. It's kind of like an analyst buy-sell rating, right? Buy-sell. See this analyst buy-sell rating? It says sell, right? This cannot go from strong sell to stronger, stronger, stronger sell. It's fixed now. It, it cannot, the only thing that this right here can do is go from sell to buy. And what do you think is going to happen when this flips from sell to buy? It's going to be a massive influx of volume. And more often than not, this thing isn't going to flip to buy until it's already halfway up through its trend, right? Um, but again, let's look at this. It it cannot go from strong sell to strong sell. If it were pointing at strong buy, it cannot go from strong buy to stronger buy. It's less about where it's pointing now and it, because the current direction that this is pointing is basically priced in, basically priced in. But once it actually moves into a strong buy, it's going to have a lot of momentum and volume carried through. And that can be said about a lot of things from this random indicator that really means nothing to analyst ratings. When an analyst reports that this company is a strong buy, this company is strong. So they can't lift their rating from strong buy to stronger buy. They cannot do that. But what they and so them just sitting there and reiterating strong buy, strong buy, strong buy. Not only is that priced in, but it's literally doing nothing literally doing nothing it's only when it changes from a strong buy to a strong sell that a market might react right and the same can say on the inverse if if an analyst rating is strong sell they can't go stronger sell stronger so that they're just going to be repeating themselves it's going to be priced in the people who care will have already made their decision the people don't it's whatever but it's when that that the people who care see that that analyst who they had been banking on saying it's a strong sell changes his mind to a strong buy that you're going to see those short positions being closed, new long positions being opened and volume picking up. And that's how you want to be playing this. And that that's kind of what an RSI represents. That's kind of why I'm talking about this. That instance of this back and forth is kind of what the RSI represents. And the first to further add to this, right? It's currently showing oversold, oversold, strong sell, over, uh, oversold, right? Six months ago, September 1st, 2021, that's more than six months, I know. Um, the RSI was pointing way at the top. It was touching the top end, that 70, per, that 70 on the RSI, right? That's typically an overbought territory. That's when all the headlines are hunky-dory. Everything's great. Everyone's buying. Dave Portnoy saying stocks only go up, you know. That's the type of headlines you're seeing, like, in this pocket, what else did we see? We saw Nike setting their in official Instagram profile picture to a crypto punk. We had insanity happening, insanity. 
you had CNBC writing articles as if NFTs were the next hot thing, like just euphoria. It's it's just, it, you can only be described as euphoria that's happening when these RSIs are in that overbought territory, right? And this, I guarantee you, was pointing at strong buy right here, strong buy. Like, thanks, indicator. You're telling me to sell at the bottom, and you're telling me to buy at the top. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's only once you can recognize these valleys and the troughs, right? The lows and the highs, and the type of human behavior that comes out of um, people when these market movements are are happening right for example let's look at this real quick cycle of market emotions euphoria we were just describing that at the top all the headlines are great everyone's making money everyone's happy they think it'll go up forever it'll never stop they they think it'll go up forever right when in reality a more seasoned trader would be able to recognize this as the point of maximum financial risk when this thing's high in the sky touching its resistance and the rsi is saying overbought right that is really when you're exposing your capital your investment your portfolio to the most potential risk because right if you're buying here you would have been you know going down 26 percent, 27 percent, 20 30 percent i lost my discord Okay. After a state of euphoria, right? You might start to feel anxiety. The market starts to turn, right? You might start to hear feel denial. You might start to feel fear, desperation. The type of things you might be saying are a temporary setback. I'm a long term investor, right? Panic capitalization. So now we're getting towards the bottom of this cycle, right? Down here, down here, and these are the type of emotions that people are going to be expressing in their tones and their headlines and the stories they're covering, right? They're going to be all panicked. They're going to be capitalizing. They're going to be, you know, getting out of positions. They're going to be despondency, depression. People are going to be sad. They're going to be all like, oh, you know, things are never going to get better. They're going to be sitting here saying it's going to be like, what if, you know, when in reality, when people are showing this sign of like depression, oppression, whatever you want to say it is, you know, that's really when you're exposing your portfolio to the least amount of risk. Because if you're buying in this territory, right, there's not much room left for it to go down and maximum upside is present. But you, you'd have to actually look at these indicators, right? And then after you start to see these periods of depression, you know, people thinking markets will never get better. They're sad. Out of that, you will start to see you, you want to be buying all buying during all of that negative emotion. Right. And then riding it up as people start to see hope and relief and optimism, excitement and thrill up into that euphoria territory. This chart very this the chart of emotions very much represents what's happening with an RSI, what's happening when this thing flips back and forth like a little toggle switch, right? You, you don't look at this indicator and be like, oh, it's pointing this direction. That means it's going in this direction. You look at this indicator like, okay, it's pointing this direction now. When it flips back to the other direction, the market's going to shift huge, right? And then when it goes back, it's going to shift huge. It's kind of like a toggle, right? It's in this direction. It can't go any more in that direction. But once it toggles, we're going to see the whole market shift and go drag to the other side of the RSI, then drag to the other side of the RSI. I hope I'm being really clear with this and how this all works. Um, let's uh, expand on that idea of risk a little bit more, right? So, for example, if you are buying at the bottom... This is when people are most concerned, right? When the headlines are the scariest. And then this would be a long position when all the headlines are euphoric. You have CNBC, a supposed trusted financialist institution, telling you that NFTs are the next big thing. You have Nike setting their, their profile pictures to crypto punks. You have... People saying stocks only go up. You have your grandmother trying to learn to day trade and your dog trying to buy AMC, right? Okay. 
So when all the headlines are great, this is in reality when you are exposed to the point of maximum financial risk. As you can see here, not much upside, huge downside, huge downside, right? Now when we are at the bottom, I lost my Discord again, bring that back. When we're at the bottom, right? The headlines are gonna be scary, you know? Things are gonna be tough. People are, might think like, oh, it's just, you know, it's it, it, it's the end, the end is near. Like they're gonna be crying from the, roo crying from the rooftops. Um, CEOs are gonna be getting replaced, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But in reality, all the damage that those silly headlines could have done has already been done. It's already been done. Like the the people who were getting shaken out have been shaken out already. The people who have been sh who were gonna get shaken out are shaken out. Now you need to recognize these opportunities as the time to have the best risk re reward relationship. Right, the the lowest potential move to the downside, but the highest potential move to the upside. Right. So that's what I'm really trying to re represent. I believe I have a video on my YouTube channel that discusses the same concept from a year ago but maybe it needed to be said again and quickly just to recap on this symbol as you can see here this is an index representative of assets from uh, across the entire European region. Um, not just one company, not just one country, but the European region as a whole. What do some of those assets cons consist of, those underlyings, right? Well, the top 10 holdings, we have Nest Nestle, Roche, ASML, Shell, uh, Louis Vuitton, right? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And I believe there is a Louis Vuitton derivative that you can get access to through your brokerage if that's something you want in there. Or you can get it through uh, exposure with this index here. Uh, HSBC Holdings, so a lot of great companies, again, representative of the European region. We also covered AAJX, right? So you can get some assets from the Asia region. You can get some from the European region. And what I'm really trying to show you, right? Let's overlay these. AAJX, AAXJ, XJ. There it is. So this is the iShares MSCI All Country Asia, except Japan. Look at this. What I'm really trying to demonstrate, guys. So the orange line is Asia. The candles are representing Europe. But look at just just look how similar the technicals are on these charts, guys. What more do I have to say? Is it not obvious? Is it a coincidence that both these markets are like oversold at simultaneously? No. Everything we said about one can almost be said about the others in regards to technicals, RSI, and then in, in regards to its overbought and oversold nature. They are both currently oversold. What a coincidence, right? You, you think that maybe if one of these starts to rebound, both of them are going to start to rebound? It's, it's, it's either both of them or none of them, right? You can't be like oh, we're the U.S., we're the best, we're the only one that's going to... No, we're all in this together. You either see the vision or division, right? So a six. how is it that we knew a year ago that markets were going to sell off? Well, everything was super overbought, guys, from Asia to Europe to the U.S., and now we are on the inverse of that. We need to recognize this. We are currently... All these countries are oversold. All of them are showing a tr uptrending price channel, and they are at the support of that uptrending price channel. All of them have an oversold RSI and have proven time and time again that every time the RSI oversold, they always rebound and come back even stronger, setting new all-time high. Every time. Across every, like, again, it would be one thing if I was showing you just one random penny stock with this one random RSI indicator, but I'm showing you a variety of indicators across a variety of major market indexes from all around the world that are all having these technical indicators line up simultaneously. It's, it's huge. These things are not coincidences. These things are not random. They do not happen by accident. Um, I'm doing my best to explain them, and I hope you guys can understand this. That all being said, though, that all being said, Where'd my Discord go? Keep this in mind. We're going to move into our next symbol. If you guys are new here, my name is Ethan. Make sure to check out my website, ethanren.com. From there, you can find links to all my various socials. We are currently live on YouTube and Twitch. So if you guys would like to be notified when I go live next, make sure to follow and subscribe. Um, 
and yeah i also have a discord make sure to join the discord also available on on the website it's free completely free always will be free there's a bunch of great free resources in there that you can utilize to better to better your trading from news alerts from all your favorite um media outlets market real-time market alerts you know so if that's something that interests you, make sure to join that. 